Okay, let's critique this airhead apostate. What a dumbass. My question is, I've seen many videos of people who were led out of New Ageism to Jesus Christ by loving Jesus. Why the hell was this guy let out of Christianity into New Ageism? Jesus, are you real? Let's listen to this fucking airhead. After 30 years of having an extremely confident Christian faith, I grew up a Christian, I went to a Bible college, and I have a Bible degree. I was a pastor for six years. I was obsessed with Christian apologetics. After 30 years of very confident Christian faith, most... So was I. 1989, 1990. But I wasn't saved. I was loved by Bible wisdom. But I wasn't fucking saved. Shocking thing happened. That faith completely collapsed. Like, I wasn't looking for a way out of my Christian... And mine would be long gone had it not been for Jesus. My experience of Jesus. But I'm still questioning, is it really Jesus? Really Jesus? It has to be, but is it really? I got too much evidence to say it is, but you know, I'm still, Jesus, Lord Jesus, are you real? Christian faith, I loved, I loved being a Christian. Most of all, I loved Jesus and my relationship with Jesus and my identity rooted in Jesus. Never in a million years would I ever imagine saying that I'm not a Christian. And so, in this video, I want to share a little bit about how that happened. So, to give a little bit of context, I'm 35 years old right now, and I would say that I've been a Christian. Let's say, if I look like you when I'm 55, I, I would want to kill myself. You look fucking old. Old. You look old. I'd kill myself if I looked like you when I was 30. Much less. Fuck this shit. For 30 years. For pretty much as long as I have memory. Yeah, it takes a form pictures tonight. I grew up in the church. I loved going to church. I was like a youth group kid, Jesus freak, 100%. You know, I was on the student leadership team in my youth group. I played drums in the worship band. I went to all the missionary trips. I was a good Christian kid. You know, I didn't drink, do drugs, no sex until marriage. Anybody can do religious things. I love it. Like a, like a person loves to write songs. But do you truly love Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Is Jesus in the house? Or is it just a hobby? A, a, is it just a life's calling, but you're not truly saved? Until marriage, all that stuff. I followed all the rules. And because I was so committed to my faith and uh, after high school I attended Moody Bible Institute which I loved that experience I, yeah, I had a wonderful experience there but it was there that I studied the Bible even further I got a Bible degree I got even more intensely devoted to my faith and once I graduated I eventually became a youth pastor I was a pastor for six years and I loved it I loved it so much I, just interacting with the students and, you know, sharing Jesus, sharing the good news of Jesus with all these students and just... A firefighter can love his job too, but quit being a fighter, fire, firefighter. Letting students know that they're loved and that they're special, it was a wonderful experience, which deepened my faith even further. So beyond that, I ended up leaving that job that I loved tremendously to work alongside my wife. She had a business and, and we started working together. But in that time, I got really obsessed with Christian apologetics. So I was studying, like, the answers to all the objections to Christianity. And uh, I actually even had a Christian apologetics YouTube channel. I articulated why I've chosen to be a Christian for these two reasons. So... That's weird. This, so I was, I'm saying like this is such a bizarre video for me to be making right now. The transformation I made was absolutely unexpected. 
So, what happened? How did this extremely confident Christian faith just totally crumble? Uh, here's what happened. So, uh, my wife and I had a son, uh, Miles, who's just like my heartbeat. I love him so much. And I hear all these stories about how people love their baby boys, baby girls, love their children. Makes me want to puke. Ah! That sweet little boy, that sweet little girl you got, one day is going to become a sexual deviant, maybe a killer, maybe a whore. You love that little baby. <coughs> Big fucking deal. Big fucking deal. Do you love me? Because if you don't love me, you can go to hell. Well, if you don't, and if you're a female, if you don't think I'm a good looking guy, God can go to hell. At the time, I was still Christian, and it was so, so deeply important to me to raise my son as a Christian, to raise him to love Jesus and to follow Jesus and to have this salvation and all this stuff. But when he was about two years old is when my faith, my like my worldview started to, started to shake a little bit. When my worldview started to change, the way... I you loved your little brat more than you loved Jesus Christ. Jesus says... If any man, he that loveth father or mother, and by inference, or baby more than me, is not worthy of me. I describe that is there were two simultaneous tracks that happened that led me basically to where I am today. My Christian beliefs were softening, but then also I was being exposed to a new kind of spirituality that I hadn't experienced before. That whack airhead woo woo. New age shit. Only stupid people believe that shit. And things that I was finding compelling. Stupid! You airhead, you fucking apostate bitch. Yeah, you, you, you see why I call him this. He's gonna start acting like a fucking airhead in a few minutes. First of all, my Christianity was softening. When my. And he's ugly! When my son was a baby, I would take him on like three or four walks a day around our neighborhood. And in our neighborhood, there's a really beautiful Catholic church. I would walk around that church multiple times every single day. I look younger than he does, and I'm fucking 50 years old. And he's motherfucking 35. I'll say it again. If I looked at this man when I'm 65, I'll kill myself. All of a sudden, this thought popped into my head. It was like this thought experiment of this devout Catholic lady. This hypothetical Catholic lady started haunting my every thought. The hypothetical lady goes to church multiple, she goes to mass multiple times a week and she's, she's, she loves God tremendously and she gives generously of her resources, you know, to the church and to her neighbor and she loves her neighbor, she loves God, she loves Jesus and all these things. Very, very devout Catholic lady. But her view of salvation is, was different from my Protestant Christian view of salvation. So my view was that only entrusting in Jesus' perfect life, um, sacrificial death, and resurrection could you find forgiveness and find salvation from your sin, and that your relationship with God would be restored forever and ever. Yeah, that's just, just what Calvinist preacher Dr. John MacArthur says too. But the devout Catholic lady, she also trusts in Jesus, but she also relies on meritorious works. To my understanding, there's an element of works based in the salvation. Anyway, also, you mean you do too? Anyways, I was thinking about this lady, and I was like, here's someone that is so dedicated to God, so dedicated to Jesus, loves God so much, and etc. But her view of salvation was different from mine. And I started thinking, could could the God that I believe in send this devout Catholic lady to hell just based off of theological differences? Okay, 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 okay. Here's something you, you, y'all motherfuckers just don't get. Anybody can do good works and be a good person. But deep down in your heart, if you've not been born again, changed on a spiritual level, You're not truly good. Eventually, external circumstances will take that good inside of you and you'll become rotten. Evil. You gotta be born, you gotta have it 
deep in here. Not just here, but here in your spirit. You must be born again. Uh, and the only way you can do this is is God. Of course, if God redeems you with Jesus' blood. But it's got to be spiritual. And it, it, how deep has it, it, does it have to be? Your goodness has to come from a level of intuition. Not just being a good person. Not just having a good heart. That's not good enough. There's none good. No, not one. Yes, you can do, do sinners can do very good things. And a lot of sinners are better people, more good people than Christians. But because the Christians don't let that inner goodness within them rule their lives. And that inner goodness comes from the Spirit of God. If you never had this, you were never will you, you, you never were born again. If you never if you were never born again, it's the spirit that's born again. Not the soul, not the body, but the spirit. And once the spirit is born again, eventually the spirit takes over and you live forever. In God's time. Mother Teresa. Here's what I believe how also. God is merciful. To whom much is given, much is required. If you know the whole gospel, you can't just say, I'm going to go out and do good. You got to be born again. You got to trust in the full gospel that you're a sinner. You need the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you, all you know is what, if you, if you do the best you can for what you know, and you don't know the full gospel, I believe this woman, this Catholic woman you're talking about, when she dies, she will be face to face with Jesus Christ. And she will be there, and she will have a decision to make. She will be given a choice to accept the full new birth of Jesus Christ. And she said, accepts us, she will we be we, we welcome to heaven. And the, uh, the goodness the goodness she has been is enough to prompt her to push her over. To being born again, she'll go to heaven. If she if she if she does uh, uh, otherwise what the goodness that she got, she's gonna see her goodness and realize it wasn't enough. And if she doesn't accept that new birth, she'll be turned over in the hell. That's what I believe. God, I, I can't believe God is just capricious. He got the God is more loving than you can ever imagine. Same thing with Mother Teresa. If she was not born again in life, when she she did uh, even even if it's toward the end of her life. She started feeling something was not wrong with her. Like she was not good enough. And that's what would happen in heaven if you lived a good life and you didn't and you didn't reject the full gospel. And now if you've heard the gospel and been convicted inside and said no, I'm just gonna do the best God I can, when you die you're gonna go straight to hell. Straight to hell. Do not pass go, do not collect eternal life. But if the heathen in Africa has a sense that he needs something, he doesn't know what it is, and he, he this something that he needs inspires him to do, do good deeds, when he dies, he will be presented with Jesus Christ. He had the choice to accept the full gospel or reject it. That's what I believe. These, fundam these fundamentalist preachers have done a good job of, job of fucking up a loving God. And I just thought, no way. There's not a chance. But I believe in God, but I curse the Holy Ghost if I look like I do, if I do not be a hot guy for a season with long forms. If I, if I had this pudginess about my face, and do I look like a sporty jock hot guy? I curse the Holy Ghost. In the hopes that he'll keep me from cursing him by giving this to me, and even if I have a stomach ache for the rest of my life after eating the pie of the sky. Because I believe in this God that is like infinitely loving and infinitely gracious and just because there's theological differences, there's no way. Like I couldn't believe that. Immediately when I thought that, that just like, I was like, well how far can you go? How bad can your theology be? And so I was like, what about Mormons? Mormons, like myself and this Catholic lady, are much closer, I think, in beliefs than Mormons. The Mormons have a pretty like, different you know world but they still read the bible they still trust in jesus and so that like think the mormon jesus not the jesus of the bible 
kept on going. That was like haunting my brain there for a while. I started to think if someone is so committed and so loves God, like just theological differences could never, you know, keep them from being in a relationship with God. That, that's, that's, that's how this all started. When you die, if you love God as best you could, well, you will be given a chance. If your love for God on this earth was enough, your faith, your faith, you're saved by faith, not a formula by faith. If what your faith and the early, early church father said, faith, if it does not work by love, is useless. If you the faith, what what hey, faith do you have had? Yes, yes. Can you just write the phone about three times? Can you give me the phone? Thank you. Oh, uh, what what this is? Okay. I'll call him in a minute. If you had faith, you had enough faith in God, but you had not passed over from life unto death, from death unto life, because you had not been fully born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, when you die, your works, how much faith which led you to do good deeds you have had, it will give you the opportunity to choose to reject or accept Jesus. But it will be hard. It may be hard. It's hard to get saved. It took me 30 years to finally pass from death into life. And the way I live sometimes, sometimes some people question that, but I know what happened. This is about time to And then I started thinking about this, my, my theory. This is like not my, this is not my theory, but I, what I call extreme grace. I started thinking about what if God... Um, has a way to save people even after they die. I, you know, I didn't have m much like biblical ground to stand on. I, I fully like was um, allowing myself to think like a heretic. <laughs> Damn good point. I agree. If God is truly loving, and God truly desires all men to be saved, and as it says in the Bible, and with God whom nothing is impossible, why the hell ha can't he? Why the hell can't he? Amen. I agree with this. It's just... You know, and then I started thinking, I started seriously considering what infinite love looks like. Amen. So I was about extreme grace. And now you're starting to make some fucking... Now a light just came on in that airhead. And then I started thinking about infinite love. And I was like, here I am. I believe in a God who's infinitely loving. A steadfast in love. Everlasting love. And Amen. I started to really consider what that word means. You know, I watched like a Netflix documentary that is called like <laughs> or something like that. And it, it really explains or tries to explain infinity. And it literally just melts your brain. It's insane. And I started thinking about, well, I believe that God's love is infinite. That God's grace is infinite. So what does that actually mean? Like, how do you reconcile that? An infinitely loving God, if you really emphasize the word infinite. And then you think about the billions and billions and billions of people that have ever existed that never gave their life to Christ. There's been billions of people on this planet and like the, the Christians or the people that were committed to, you know, the, the Hebrew God is such a small percentage of the human population. You know, like right now, I think we're at, what, 8 billion people on this planet, and there's like 2 billion Christians. Too many people in this world. We need a good World War Three. When the world gets overpopulated, the value of human life goes down. S 6 billion people. <laughs> like, of the, pe of the people on the planet right now, 6 billion of them, according to mainline Protestant Christianity, are going to be separated from God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Color. It's not retarded, brother. I love him, but he's retarded. Spiritually speaking. Anyways, that's true. You get, what's that, his name? Uh, yeah, I got a I'll call him in a minute. Yeah. It's true. If God's love is truly infinite, what I'm seeing of God's love from Calvinist and Christianity leaves me underwhelmed and disgusted with God. I can think of a way he could have saved the damned. He'll say, he, he takes the words right out of, my, out of my mouth after this. 
if God is love and love is infinite and God is infinite, why in the fuck can he save everybody? Provide a way, a plan of salvation for the damned. I can think of a way. I'm not gonna. He, he's gonna say it. He takes the words out right out of my mouth. Praise God. So I don't have to go through the burden of my striving to save myself. Unless, of course, the, I hear the brake stopping. The only person that God loves infinitely is himself. Him himself, the Father to the Father between Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and His love for us is. You know, only incidental. He gives it. He, he only owes it to him. Love himself. But if he loves us, he it's a gift he gives to us. <sighs> fuck it, man. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. And fuck God if I do not become a good-looking guy. In hell. And then we have this infinitely loving God. So anyways, I started to like really, really contemplate infinitely loving and what that means for the creator of everything to be infinitely loving. And, and things just weren't adding up for me the more and more I considered this. So then it was around that point that I really started to entertain Christian universalism. Don't quote me on this, but basically it's just like that when Jesus came here to save the world and that his his death and resurrection covers all sin it actually covers all sin like literally whether people accept it or not and yeah i agree with you but until you accept it and get the holy spirit to work it out in your life it would do you no good but if this applies to everybody vicariously then those who go to hell should be able to accept it and what's the spirit says, where, where can I have for my spirit? If I make my bed in hell, well, I'm out there. And according, uh, no, I'm not talking about people who go to hell. The second they touch the flames, oh, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, sin must be worked through. Sin must be burned out of you. Even though God declares you righteous, he must burn the sin out of your spirit before you can stand before him. His blood washed it away, but it had, at once it's been washed away, it has been be burnt out of your spirit. And the more sins you committed, the longer you had, will be in the lake of fire until you finally came to yourself like the prodigal son and came home. That there is a universal reconciliation. That Christians, when they die, they're, they have a relationship with God and they go to heaven. But a non-Christian, I believe the universal, the Christian universalist would say the non-Christian would go to hell, but it would be a temporary place of purification and refinement. You know, I read this book, uh, That All Shall Be Saved by David Bailey Hart. That was oh, I wish this was the truth. I want to so believe it so badly, but... You see, you can find, this, find it in this book right here. I can't believe it. I want to believe it. In my book, if God was infinitely loving and omnipotent, eventually he found a way to save the devil and his angels. Now, how is somehow the perfect way called annihilationism recreated? I can share that with you sometime, but it's a burden for it's burdens for it, it hurts my mind and brain and stroke stricken. Speaking ability to try to say it is a burden. So, and since nobody's gonna watch this fucking video anyways, what the fuck does it matter? That was a game changer for me. That one, that book, for me, disintegrated my belief in hell. As a Christian, and this is crazy. Now, like hindsight, looking back at when I was a Christian, I didn't really like. I believed in a heaven and a hell. But I didn't really like in 30 years, and it, I, you know, it's slightly embarrassing to be to be completely honest with you. But in like 30 years, I didn't really deeply consider hell. I was just so pumped on having a relationship with Jesus that I didn't. I wasn't even really considering heaven or hell. I was just like a Christian. I was just I just loved Jesus, and that belief I believed would would I would have an eternal relationship with God and not be eternally separated from God. And I wanted to make sure that as many people as possible would be eternally 
you know, in relationship with God, God and not fuck separated it. from God. But I didn't God really, like, deeply, goddamn deeply, deeply consider goddamn the ramifications game. of there God being a hell for damn billions, it. billions and billions and billions of people and how, quite frankly, insane that is. Anyways, at the end of this, especially at the end of reading this book, I was like, my, you could say my Christian beliefs had greatly softened. You know, the narrow path was considerably wider at this point. Now, that was one track. That was Christianity was softening. The other track was that I was being exposed to a new kind of spiritual... Listen up, dickhole. Even if, it, even if we're right, universalism, still, it is difficult. It, the gate is straight and the way is narrow. It is hard. It took me 30 years to finally be able to get saved. 30 long, hard years. Hard. It was, it was extremely difficult answer to the existence of everything. This Hello? was happening at the same time as uh, my Christian beliefs were softening. But the first thing that really happened was uh, Jenna, my wife, she went to channeling. Spirit, like channeling spirit guy. So here's where he becomes the airhead. I was completely in the dark with what that meant or anything. I didn't know what that meant. She had a really positive experience. This person was like telling things of uh, to Jenna about Jenna that she never could have known and I was totally open to the idea of going but then also at the time I was still a Christian and I was like very hello? hesitant I was like very nervous about this I was like hello I see we called Christians aren't supposed to do this but I'm my mind is open for whatever reason so I went and I set an appointment to do spirit guide channel now, if I'm being totally honest, when I went there, I was I was a Christian, and I was, like, testing the spirit. I was like, I want to know. If I go in here, and I feel like this is just off, I'm like, at that time, I'm like, Holy Spirit, you need to, like, sound the alarm if this is... Bye. I will. So I go, completely lovely experience, you know, no Now the rest of the video is fucking airhead shit. I went there. You stupid motherfucker became a new ager. You stupid motherfucker. You stupid mother... Hello? The fuck? What the... Stupid motherfucker.